Hello music listeners, underground enthusiasts, and anybody who grew up on the era of YouTube where every single review and commentary video started with a fun little silly skit. Shoot him, I'm the real Melmige. No, shoot him, I'm the real Melmige. If only there is some way that I could tell you guys apart. Now what would a question that only Melmige know the answer to? Quick, how do you master a song? Well, first I you start with no. Those with the times, huh? Another week has gone by, which means more songs have come out that I care to talk about. Let's do it. Kicking the week off strong with Johnson with Newsflash, It's Not Looking Good. This is a new track in the Butterfly Effect Saga, an album that Johnson has been particularly meticulous about rolling out because this process started about over a year ago with Don't Be Scared. And since then, Johnson has consistently proven herself to be a powerhouse in alt rock. And I love this new track a lot. It's a really stylistically dense, well-produced track, pop punk progressions, chiptune riffs, and a chunky anthemic hook. It's all rather busy, but in that regard, it's also pretty controlled and the engineering and production, it's super clean uh, and very pleasant to listen to. The rattled off drum passages are intense, but they're well mixed and the thrashy guitar riffs dominate without washing out any of Johnson's powerful vocals or more intricate production choices. Uh, it's certainly committed to some pop punk sensibilities, but I would hardly say that it is restricted by them. Still out of the box thinking and the writing is impassioned and full of vivid imagery. And the song wraps up with a slick, shiny, electrifying guitar solo. I am pretty stoked to hear this from Johnson and definitely an artist to keep your eyes on. I've been enjoying a lot of her work now for quite a while, uh, and I'm super excited to see how the rest of this rollout plays out. Then up next, we've got Sheku with New Place, and this song has some pretty cool sound design choices laced together here. It's sludgy and metallic, the bass flooding the low end of the track pretty much the entire time, and the rest of the percussion is twitchy and sharp. I love how intoxicating and over the top it all sounds, because this song's production is pretty maximalist, almost obstructing itself into a trippy, murky mix of half recognizable, half clear sounds. But I also think that is the strength of this track, and the foggy atmosphere is accentuated by Sheku's vocals, which cut through with a nice, crisp clarity. And all of this dreaminess plays into the writing as well. Sheku is very focused and concerned with change and how it can be restricted by obligation and expectation. I want to be this, but I have to be this. It's conflicted and the sound reflects that in its hazy atmosphere. Pretty killer. New MK Ultra with All the World's A Stage. I love how this song opens up. It reminds me of the sort of string focused uh, avant folk that you would find on like first utterance by Comus or even like a Richard Dawson record. It's playful and plucky. Uh, honestly, we would, would be kind of stoked if MK Ultra just did an entire song that sounded like this. Sure, it's present throughout intermittently, uh, but still, I mean, this is a really cool sound. But I'm not disappointed with the thrashy metal direction that it quickly heads in. Time and time again, MK Ultra has proven himself to be a capable and unique vocalist. And honestly, like I said, that whimsical, quirky nature uh, in the beginning is maintained throughout, but not only just in like the bridge where those uh, acoustic sections come back, uh, but also in the chugging guttural metal passages, uh, kind of in an upbeat and bouncy rhythm that just makes the song so much fun to listen to. The song takes a pretty sharp turn into house, if you can believe it, uh, which is a decision that I, I don't hate, but I, I do wonder if it disrupts the flow of the track a little bit. But I will say not many artists could pull that decision off better than MK Ultra. He always makes these wild stylistic choices with a lot of tact, so I will give him that. One of a kind as always. We've got a new Hyrith track with God, and man, this song is heavy. This dropped, dejected folk sound is something that Hyrith continues to refine uh, into a perfect beast of atmosphere and emotion. There is pretty much a persistent room space and fog that rests under this entire track, uh, a bit of a pleasant white noise that you don't think about until you do, if you catch my drift. The intoxicating slow crawl of the song reinforces the weary isolation of the lyrics, which feel confused and desperate, but also a little bit vindictive. Hyrus continues to be an artist that people want to be but can't. Uh, he's really got the sound nailed down. Although some listeners may find the sound insistent and indulgent, I think that the intense, somber tone breaks through well and makes for another great Hyrith track. Trace Guys has dropped superpowers, and with help from Unordinary Beats, an incredibly talented producer in his own right, Trace Guys hits a pretty nostalgic note for this one. Does anybody else remember, like, 2017, uh, 2018, when rappers would take an idea or really iconography born out of pop culture, turn it into a starting point for a song, use that as the base foundation for the concept, and then just taking it as far as they possibly can? I know what you know what I'm talking about. Like, heavily referential tracks where the cover art uh, was the artist, the rapper stylized to be you know out of any given children's cartoon of their choice but my point is 
is that this reminds me of, of that era of music in the best way. I love how fun this track is. I love uh, the references and the bars. The melodies and the production are bright and buzzing and this droning 808 uh, is equally rattled, but despite how intense it is, it's also really clean and well mixed. I mean, it sits perfectly in that mix. And as Trey tumbles through Teen Titans bar, he rips through this track with an icy cold delivery. His energy is cool and infectious. Uh, and honestly, the vocal mix here provides just as much texture as the production. Although you could argue it's staying power should it be this way, I kind of wish the song was longer. It's a lot of fun. It's really catchy. Both of them kill it. And to end our list, we have Veils with Assistance, with Half-Hearted, and Mac on the production. Definitely a wistful, folky instrumental here. Uh, soft, sadicky snares, gentle kicks. Everything has a nice passive roll to it. And the guitar riff is super slick and shiny as well. Uh, and it cuts through pretty much everything else here really sharply. But despite that, the highest point of contrast here is the vocal mixing, because both Veils and Half-Hearted here fight against the organic, soft tone of Mac's production with warbled, glossy mixes that would maybe be found on a more processed emo trap song. That being said, I like the way it sounds. It's a cool clash of aesthetics that really isn't as jarring as it may seem at first, and that glossy tone does play well against the guitar. It's clean, but it's exciting. Everyone here works pretty well together. It's bittersweet, heartfelt, and above all, catchy. And that is going to do it for this week's list. If you've listened to these songs, let me know how you feel about them. If you haven't listened to them, go listen to them, come back, and then tell me how you feel about them. Like, subscribe, put me in your will, all the normal stuff. I'm really hoping to get that mid-century China set. Catch me in the next video where I work that shit silly style. So when editing the video, uh, I was like, man, that outro sounds familiar. And so I went to last week's video and I pretty much said the exact same thing. Fuck.